work. Everyone has to do it. Whether you're working a nine to five, climbing the corporate ladder, or you're freelancing. One thing is for sure, if you follow your passion, you'll never work a day in your life. Hello, and welcome to Never Work A Day. I'm your host, Kabari Edie. This is the show that explores turning your passion into a business. Today, we interview Mr. Greg McNeil of Dark Box Images, all the way from Falkirk, Scotland. Hello, Greg. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, Kabari. It's, uh, you know, we're just keeping on, you know? Welcome to the show, Never Work A Day. I'm really excited to talk to you about your business. Greg works in salt prints, wet plate photography. Greg, tell us a little bit about your passion. I've been an image maker for 30, 35 years, um, ever since junior high school when I got my first Pentax K1000, started shooting 35 mil. And then when I went through high school and then into university, I took more film classes and cinema classes. And then after university, I worked as uh, first a, a film camera assistant and then I started shooting films for other people. Um, I shot documentaries and features and lots of corporate stuff. And I also continued that, uh, that photographic work through there. And so I was always interested in the process involved to get to the image. That got me to shooting all different kinds of film formats and then looking at different ways to make those images and different ways to manipulate those images, sometimes in camera. So a lot of my early work was with plastic cameras and pinhole cameras and things that I could do to manipulate the image before it got to the film. When I came across this process, I realized that these images were what I was trying to do my entire photographic life. The process that I use is called wet plate collodion. It was invented in 1850 by a guy named Frederick Scott Archer. It involves using a piece of metal like this or a piece of glass and what you do is you, you coat the glass with a substance called collodion, which is a nitrocellulose gun cotton dissolved in ether and a couple of other things. And this collodion acts as a, um, an emulsion for our photograph. After you coat the plate, you soak it in silver nitrate. And what happens there is the silver nitrate soaks into the collodion and uh, makes the collodion light sensitive. And then once it's, uh, it's become light sensitive, then you can um, load it into the plate holder and then expose your plate and then take it back into the dark room. And then you take the developer and by hand, you flow the developer over the plate for 15 seconds or however long you're developing. And then you pour water over that to stop the developing. After that, it's light safe. You can take it outside. And uh, then you put it in the fixer and you have what I call the magic bit, where you can watch the image turn from negative to positive, and then you let it dry, and then you either wax it or varnish it. They're all handmade, they're completely manual, and I am making these images from start to finish. And that's something that really spoke to me. Greg, I can feel the passion coming from you. It seems like you always wanted to get into this. Do you remember the moment, Greg? that you knew you wanted to become a filmmaker or photographer? I got my first camera in junior high school. I knew that I had a passion for photography pretty much immediately. I thought that if I could shoot enough of my world, I could then print it, look at it, and kind of make sense of it. As far as a filmmaker, I was uh, working at this video store at the time back when we had video stores. I was working alone in the shop and this movie was playing and it was a terrible movie. I don't remember what movie it was. And I thought to myself, man, this movie sucks. I would have done X, Y, and Z to make this better. And then I was like, oh, cool, I should do that. And so that's that started me on that path to the idea. But at that point, I didn't know what I wanted to do in that industry. It wasn't until I got to I think my second or third year of university where I thought, where I realized that, oh, I wanna play with the toys. I wanna 
work behind the camera. I want to choose the lenses and, you know, load the mags and light the scene. And it really filled a passion because I really love tinkering with the stuff and playing with the toys. I know exactly where you're coming from. As a comedian, I always wanted to entertain people. I, you know, I was an attention child. I used to uh, seek attention all the time. I don't know when exactly that was, but there came a point when I said, you yeah, know, this is what I want to do with my life. I want to turn this passion of mine into a business. And so that's a part of the journey. It's really a part of the journey. Speaking of the journey, going back to college, what were some of the most important things that you learned? I think uh, university was critically important to what I did because it allowed me to gain access to experts in my field that I wouldn't normally have, but have had access to. I learned to listen and I learned how to work collaboratively with other people. That's one of the lessons that really helped me in life. When you're at university working on these projects, particularly motion picture projects, you have so many people that are trying to do a job and everybody's got to work together towards this one vision. Whether that's your vision or someone else's vision, you've got to understand how to work together and how to do the best job you can and work with other people that you normally wouldn't get along with. Let's get to know Greg a little bit more. Greg, what were some of your art and musical influences uh, coming up? Well. Um, Obviously photography, I really love the work of like Walker Evans and uh, Alfred Stieglitz and uh, Richard Avedon. I guess kind of the work of Talbot, but I didn't really discover him until later. But music wise, um, I'm a huge Peter Gabriel fan and I loved the uh, art rock of the 80s, you know, King Crimson. And I'm always a sucker for British New Wave, you know, 80s British New Wave music. Cinema wise, I've always loved the uh, the film noir um, <clears throat> genre, and of course I'm a sucker for 80s action films, you know? Who isn't? E like the really cheesy ones, you know, like the Arnold Schwarzenegger ones, like Raw Deal and Commando and uh, Predator and all those. Predator, Commando, man, those are two of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, in fact, to this day, I can't watch Predator alone. I mean, I have to have somebody with me. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you, um, your time in the corporate world, do you feel that was necessary for you to get to where you are now? Oh yeah, all of the stuff that I did informed me in some way. You know, you have the, uh, the independent feature work, which teaches you how to make images on a shoestring budget. You have the corporate work, which teaches you how to work to a plan and work to someone else's vision say, I need a, a film or video that says this in this way. And the documentary work is, you know, how to tell a story, how to tell the right story, how to tell your story, how to look at a situation and find a point of view and, and express that point of view. And I think all of these things, including all of my photographic work, um, has informed and given me a step into where I am now. This is hard work that I truly enjoy, that at the end of an event, I go home feeling like I've, I've done a good job and I've given something back to the people that have given me money for this experience. Greg McNeil of Dark Box Images is our guest. Uh, Greg, one of the things that comes to mind when you say that uh, is a book that I've been reading called The Infinite Game. In The Infinite Game, it talks about there are three stages of education learning, living it, and then leading. You know, with dark box images, what are some of the ways that you are learning, living, and now leading? And what, what do you see for the future of dark box images as you take more of a leadership role in the world of photography? Well, thank you for that. That's, uh, that's a very humbling statement. I guess the way I'm, I'm leading, as it were, is that I want to share this process. And part of uh, what we do at dark box images at these events is I take people through this process from start to finish. And I explain the history of the process. And it's all about education. So we've become so disconnected from making images you know it's it's so easy with our phone a click where I'm kind of taking people through the history of photography and at the end they have a photograph yes 
And, but it's not just an object, it's a piece of art. And this object has a story. And these people take this story and this experience away with them. We call it the Victorian tintype experience. It definitely sounds like you've lived it, you've learned it, and now I'm getting a leadership vibe from you. Um, it's definitely something that's remarkable. Can you talk about how important it is to provide an experience for your clientele? What I offer that's different is I'm going to take my sitter through a, a process that's going to last around 15 minutes. And we start out by saying, okay, well, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take this plate and I'm going to pour collodion over, the, over this plate. And then we're going to soak this plate in silver nitrate for four minutes. And during that four minutes, I'm going to talk to you about the history of this process, the guy that invented it and why it's so important. And after that four minutes, we're going to go in and I'm going to hook you up to this, this head brace and I'm going to sit you in, in front of just a staggering amount of light. And you're going to have to remain absolutely stock still for six to eight seconds while I make this photograph. And then when I'm done making that photograph, I'm going to take you back to my TARDIS darkroom and you're going to watch on a monitor where, while I'm inside the darkroom, hand developing your, your plate. And then once that's done developing, I'm going to take that out and we're going to sit and watch it go from negative to positive right before your eyes in the fixer tank. This portrait now is imbued with an experience and a story. And it's something that they will take and put on their mantle. The reason we can charge what we do is because we're offering something more than a photograph. Greg, what was the hardest part for you once you got the business going? The hardest part about starting uh, Dark Box Images as a business was figuring out who my audience was going to be and what they would be willing to pay for what I did and how can I price that so that I can make some money and make it affordable for them. My partner and I spent about a year um, figuring this out, uh, figuring out workflow and expenses, and figuring out what our price points would be for each size of portrait. At events, we offer three sizes. We offer a four by five size, which is small, which is our small size. We offer a half plate, which is this size, our medium. This is just smaller than five by seven. And we also offer eight by 10. And we realized that with these three sizes and the price points that we offer, that we could hit a sweet spot, giving people what they wanted, us being able to make a little money and not having to gouge our customers. I think price points are critical, uh, but not as critical as defining your audience. The work that I do with dark box images is very specialized. It's very niche. So we really had to work hard to figure out where our audience was because not everybody is gonna pay the price that we charge for a portrait when they can just take a selfie with their phone. So it has to be special and we have to figure out how to make that special. One of the ways in which I am broken as an artist is that if I'm at an event and making a portrait and that portrait doesn't turn out in a way that I like, I'm gonna retake it. And I've had people go, no, 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 this is amazing. I say, no, you think it is, but I'll tell you what, let me redo it one more time and you can choose. And 100 out of 100 times they go, oh, I get it. Because some people don't know what quality looks like. And I have to educate my clients to know what quality looks like. What do you think one of your favorite moments has been running dark box images? Uh, my favorite moments uh, continue to be being able to share this photographic process with people that I meet and being able to tell the story of this process and watching their eyes light up when they see that image go from negative to positive in the fixer. Having people look at the dark room and just love the dark room. And the, the, the TARDIS dark room is quite possibly one of the favorite things that I have ever made in my life next to my daughter. Because you have a lot of people that try this process in their dark rooms or their studios. And the real challenge is when you leave that studio environment, you have so many other things that impact this process because this process is affected by everything. It's affected by ambient temperature, humidity, even barometric pressure, um, the age of your chemistry matters. And so when you move this stuff out into the world, 
you have a whole nother set of problems you have to deal with. And so it's figuring out that workflow and figuring out how can I make that work. I spent two months in, a, in my garage trying to build this. And the garage was so small that I couldn't actually physically build it inside. If I wanted to put it together, it had to be outside. The first event that we took the TARDIS to, um, it actually hadn't been fully set up yet. We had to drive into Glasgow and pick up the red acrylic for the windows. And so the first time it was actually fully set up was at the event. And I, I kind of thought it would work, but I had no idea if it would actually truly work <laughs> until, I just, until I got there and set it up for the first time. This work is the most rewarding work I have ever done in my life. You know, and I, and I put that right up there and above all the feature work that I did, all the documentary work that I did. This work, being able to share this with people and share my, my passion and my fascination is what really makes it worthwhile. We're finishing up with Greg McNeil of Dark Box Images. Greg, if people are interested in learning more about you and learning more about Dark Box Images, how can they find you online? Well, you can find out anything you need uh, to know about Dark Box Images at our website, darkboximages.com. And we have a uh, Facebook, uh, Dark Box Images Limited. We also have a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash darkboximages. And our uh, Instagram is GBM Cine Photo. That's my personal uh, Instagram account. Greg McNeil of Dark Box Images has been our guest today. We're so very thankful to have him. Peace. Thank you for joining us. This has been Never Work a Day. If you enjoyed this content, please like, comment, or subscribe. Hit that little bell to enable notifications. You'll always see our content. Thank you for joining us.